So if you clicked on this video, you're probably studying for the SAT or wondering, how the heck did Desmos make it onto the SAT? That's right, you get a Desmos calculator on the SAT now. So why is this so shocking? Well, aside from Desmos being an art canvas, a music studio, and a 3D modeling software, it's actually a pretty powerful calculator that helps you solve a lot of the problems on the SAT with minimal thinking. Need to solve for X? Throw it into Desmos. Need to solve a system of equations? Throw it into Desmos. Need to plot a circle? Throw it into Desmos. Okay, this is great and all, but is this really better than using the $100 TI-84 that every high school math teacher tells you to buy? Now, I'll admit you can't play Pokemon Red on Desmos, but you don't have to wait forever to watch your calculator graph something. I mean, look how slow this is. So how do we Desmos? How would you usually solve a system of equations? You find a way to eliminate a variable, solve for the remaining variable, and if you have to, plug that back into the original equation and find the variable that you got rid of. But how would you do that now? Well, you just plug it into Desmos and see where the lines intersect just by clicking on the point that it gives you. And that's it. That's your answer. This question is a perfect example as to why you should be using Desmos on the SAT. I mean, look at this explanation that College Board gives you to solve this equation. To solve this using Desmos, you just plug in the two equations that they give you into Desmos and make a slider for that constant A. And since it tells you that this ha only has one point of intersection, you just keep adjusting A until you get one point of intersection. And again, you just click on the point and you have your answer. For single variable equations, you could just plug in the equation into Desmos, and that vertical line you get is x. So since this question is asking for x minus 7, you could either just take what you have and subtract by 7, or you could also plug in the x minus 7 graph and find the point of intersection. Desmos can also do absolute values. So if you put in the absolute value bars, Desmos will give you both solutions to your equation. Desmos is super useful when it comes to evaluating functions. For examples like these, you can just plot in that equation and click on the minimum. And likewise, you can click on any intercepts, the vertex, and any other point on the graph. And a neat trick is that if you type in the decimal, you can click on the fraction sign on the left, and it'll give you the fraction version. Also, this is a good time to show that Desmos can also shift the functions around just by typing in the changes. And for questions like these, where I ask to evaluate every single answer choice, you can just plug all of them into Desmos and see what you get. So for this case, ask for what has no real solutions. So after you plug in every single equation, you can just see which one doesn't plot properly. We can solve the questions that ask to find the value of some constant like b by making a slider and moving it to reach whatever condition the question is asking for. So for this question, you would plot negative x squared plus bx minus 676 and y equals 0. Make a slider for b and just keep moving it until there are zero points of intersection, meaning that there are no solutions to this equation. And that will give you your answer for b. But here you see that when you have b equals 52, you do have a point of intersection. And so moving it one value over to b equals 51 shows that there's no point of intersection, and that has to be your answer. Usually for a question like this, you would need to remember the formula for slope and how to find the y-intercept. Or you can just insert a table into Desmos, put in every single point that is given to you, and just click a little button, and it gives you the equation of the line. And it's all you have to do. Desmos can help you solve questions like these asking for a line of best fit by a method that I like to call brute force, which just means that you take every single answer choice and plug it into Desmos and see which one works out for you. So that would be D in this case, since it matches the point showing the given scatter plot the best. And this method works surprisingly a lot. Here's another brute force instant. If you forgot that the slope was rise over run or are having issues interpreting this graph, you can just plot every single function that they show you until you get the line that matches this one exactly. And that's all you need to do. You, there's no memorization needed for this. And you could type in any point you want onto Desmos. So you could take some points off the graph that was given to you and see where they fall on any of the lines that you just plotted. And the line that has all of the same points is your answer. Desmos also supports inequalities. Plotting out an inequality equation shows that everything in the shader region is a part of your solution. Everything in that shader region satisfies the inequality, and anything on a dotted line is a not a part of your solution. So for this problem, after you put in your inequality, you could type in a table and put in all the points that are given to you as answer choices, and anything that falls within your shader region is your answer. Now Desmos also lets you grab circles. So for a question like this, if you don't remember the equation for a circle, you can just brute force it and put every single answer choice A, B, C, and D and see which one is shifted down by two points. 
And additionally, you can get some nice information from Desmos. Like the center of the circle is the midpoint of two opposite points. And you can literally just type in midpoint and enter those two coordinates, and that will show up for you right there in Desmos. For a question like this, instead of having to remember the equation for a circle and reasoning which one of these answer choices will lie on that circle, you can literally just drag your mouse over the entire thing and see every single point, including the point that matches one of the answer choices. Desmos has a ton of other functions, like finding the mean, the median, the distance. All you have to do is just plug in your set of numbers and Desmos will spit out the answer for you. And you can also do trick functions like this. So you could put in tangent of 92 pi over 3, and it'll give it to you in a decimal, but again, you could just brute force all the radicals in Desmos and get the correct answer. Desmos is great, but it's not always the fastest method. If you have enough practice, see patterns between SAT questions, and understand the math, you could do things a lot faster than Desmos. For instance, this question is a simple factoring problem. It'd be way faster to recognize that you take out 2xy instead of having to plug every single answer choice into Desmos. And same for this question, it'd be much faster to just combine like terms instead of brute forcing the answer into Desmos. So use Desmos. Just remember to use Desmos responsibly. 